Hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm a marine biologist and I am absolutely obsessed with marine books. While lots of people like to garden, I like to shelf. I love rearranging all of the books, buying nice little knickknacks to put next to the books to make them look even prettier. And the shelves take pride and place in my home. But more than just for decoration, Marine books can be a fantastic way to learn, to get new information, just to stare prettily at the pictures and stare at the covers of the books. <laughs> For today, I'm going to take you through exactly what books I own, take you on a tour through my bookshelf and give you the best book recommendations for your marine biology book needs. Mm. Okay, so let's get into this and let's chat about, well, all of the books that I have on my bookshelf. First up, we have a book that I've spoken about in some other videos, which uh, I just really, really admire this author. And this book is, you know, incredible. This is The Wild Remedy by Emma Mitchell. And she walks through the entire year and talks about, you know, her mental health and how that's connected to nature and how nature can be this amazing remedy. And it's just stunning artwork and absolutely stunning graphics and just so very emotional and touching and it's just a really, really important book. So I highly, highly recommend this book. Next up is Blowfish's Oceanopedia by uh, Tom the Blowfish Herd. He, this book is great. This is the type of book that you are going to sit down and pick up and read, you know, a couple of paragraphs at a time. Um, it's full of fun facts and great things. I don't, I, whenever I just have a spare five minutes and I'm walking past my bookshelf, I just pick it up and just read a section and always learn something new and fun. So this is a fab book for anyone uh, that wants to know 291 extraordinary things you didn't know about the sea. And just look at how gorgeous that cover art is. Amazing. This next book is part of two books, two or three maybe books that I have. This was from when I went on a field trip to Puerto Rico um, and it has all of the ID features of, uh, I think there's fish and corals and different things of all the wonderful tropical fish. Oh, so many memories come back when looking through this book. So although while I'm in the UK, probably not the uh, most useful book, it is amazing to stare at and gorgeous. And these books are fantastic if you are exploring um, the Caribbean. It, uh, oh, it was just amazing, it was just incredible. A book far more useful and relevant to anyone in the UK is this absolutely fantastic book from Paul Naylor, who I was lucky enough to see at a talk actually in Pembroke once. And, uh, and he had so many of these amazing photos in his talk. He's so knowledgeable and he is incredible because he goes diving and takes these, I mean, just next level, incredible photographs. And there's information about the species. But if I'm honest, this book is all about staring at the wonderful photography. And this is like photography dream goals. So um, if you're into underwater diving, underwater photography, marine life, and just learning a bit more about the just sheer vast numbers of things that we can find uh, on the UK coastline, then check this out because this is oh, it's just such a stunning book. I have spoken about this book before and this book is incredible. It's just really funny and I really, really relate to it. Not surprisingly, as it's about rock pools by Heather Buttervent. And she just, she takes you through 24 marine creatures. And each chapter is just, it just makes me laugh out loud. But also, uh, I don't know, it's just so relatable. It's You go on the adventure with her. And you just feel like all of your rock balling thoughts have been put into a book. And um, yeah, if you're into rock balling, this is a book for you. Now, this book I haven't actually read before. Don't worry, I haven't like stolen it from a library. Um, it was brought secondhand. I'm really excited to get into reading this. I haven't yet. I've been saving it. But The Secret Life of Lobsters. 
And I imagine it's about the secret life of lobsters. If anyone's read this, let me know and let me know what you think. And uh, I'll keep you updated with uh, what I think when I get around to reading it. This is probably one of my most beloved books. The Kind's Complete Guide to British Coastal Wildlife. And I've used this um, for years. And it was brought for me by my, my little brother. And uh, I've used it all the way through undergrad and beyond. These little labels actually are post-it notes of like species I found during um, my undergrad dissertation. So I, I won't take these out because um, oh, there's just, it's just, you know, there's an emotional attachment to this book. Look at the well-worn page of crabs here. But it's basically what it says on the tin. It is a book full of a lot of the species you can find rock pooling. And it's quite a quick and easy way to find things. You kind of just look for the photo and it gives you a little bit of information. What's great is it, it shows you where it is like its status so this species is widespread and locally common but if you find a species that says you know only ever found in the southeast and you're finding it somewhere else um you've probably got the id wrong and it's just a really quick way um to find some species i also have some more id guides but they are not included because they are currently being used so i will link to this video that i did before where i spoke about how to id marine creatures right from you know, a simple guide like this to what people use as taxonomists to um, to record and make sure the species are right. Um, but they are currently at uni being used. So, um, yeah, uh, I haven't got them to show you. This is a really fun uh, little book, The Extreme Life of the Sea. And stuff that's in the sea is weird and they have to deal with a lot of things. So um, these two authors have kind of captured that with just everything that the ocean uh, has to kind of go under. I you I don't know, you could read it either way, but I use this book a bit like um, the other book. I'll just pick it up and kind of read a section and just learn some new cool things about things that have to deal with the extreme conditions of the sea. This is a nice little read. And, oh, just again, love a cover of a book. Love it. I talk a lot on this channel about um, marine invertebrates, but the UK has home to some amazing whales, dolphins and seals. Uh, so this is a book not only for the UK, but for the world. And it's just really, really nice. The artwork is gorgeous, but it's also just nice to pick it up and kind of be like, oh, one day I would love to see some of these, especially the whales. I adore whales, as I imagine many people do. So if you want an ID guide to um, whales and dolphins and seals, if you're traveling the world, it's all in one book right here for you. Oh, now look at this, just look at the artwork on its cover. Just take a moment to take that in. That's oh, just gorgeous. The artwork is by, let me try and find it. Aaron John Gregory. It's just, I love it so much. And I love the author Helen Scales' books even more. They are fantastic. Whatever topic she picks, there is a few. Um, she's also done Spirals in Time, which is all about the secret life and curious afterlife of seashells. This is, is just an ode, uh, uh, just a love, uh, just amazing. She's researched it so well everything about shells is in here it's funny it's relatable it's just i have to read it only about three or four pages at a time because there's so much information in it in both of these books that you just need to take you just need yeah you just need to read a few pages and you just learn so much information you can take a few a while to like settle in um and yeah they're just fantastic what i can guarantee you whatever whatever topic Helen Scales picks, whether it's fish or spirals in time. And I think she's coming up with a deep water one. It's just an incredible journey. So if you are into sea life, these are the books for you. A uh, bit of a different read here. I picked this one up because it just made me laugh. Um, the biology of sex of different creatures is very different and 
well, I don't know if you can call it hilarious. I find it hilarious. But in the sense that it's not funny because it's just nature. And um, it's actually very fascinating to find that some creatures have really evolved some bizarre adaptations to try and get round what is uh, a difficult... Um, yeah, some difficult problems. And that's all about this. Um, just read it to find out more. I'm not going to go into detail, but um, fascinating read. I mean, everyone loves an octopus. I am... Uh, to say I'm not uh, included in that, to say, I'm, well, I say I am included that uh, in Love with Octopus is probably an understatement. I adore them. And this book is just... Well, let's go with Soulful. Um by Cy Montgomery. It's just a very, very pleasant, lovely talk about um, octopuses. And they kind of walk through like, uh, it starts off with her, uh, it starts off with them talking about visiting an octopus in an aquarium. And just the first chapter of getting drawn in by that and the notes and the interesting things you learn just from that is incredible and it just keeps getting better from there so I love this book I think that's the thing with um with book kind of reviews or sharing I'm gonna say that a lot I love it all but no I own them so of course I would this is part of a series which again the rest of the series are being um used in actual id but the sea search book series um, and there's lots of them on seaweeds and um, uh, sea squirts and bryozoans and all these different things are fantastic. They are really, really good. I would recommend always trying to get the latest edition because every time they bring out a new edition, they pack a load more species in. And it is, I mean, this has every known anemone and coral in the UK in, included in here with absolutely gorgeous uh, photos, but also some absolutely great descriptions of size and these keys all will link to, um, to like here so that you can kind of look Ooh, not doing that very subtly but you can look and see what it means it's just a very thorough and incredible book series this is as good as you're going to get in id books without having to go down the route of taxonomic keys which is a very scientific process and a bit tedious so if you are not a I suppose professional marine biologist, you're not having to do taxonomic ID for, for your job and you want something to ID things with, this is your best bet second to that. Love these books. Now this book looks, well except for the fact that it's nice and clean, looks in, this, in the style of kind of like a vintage old book. It's not, it's a newer book but it's kind of an ode to the artwork and information of the vintage books. And I really like, uh, it just kind of walks you through all the sea creatures and has some gorgeous artwork and nice little facts in there. But I mainly love this one for, for the artwork. I, oh, lovely, see. Um, I do have a collection of actually vintage old um, books. And I'm going to do that in a separate video because I have quite a few of them and I want to walk through them in a bit more detail. I love collecting books from like charity shops and things that are old natural history books and oh, they're just gorgeous um, so I thought I'd mention this here and if you uh, want to see that then uh, make sure to let me know in the comments what a quote I love books yeah this is the other book for the Caribbean oh my god look how colourful all this one day I will head back to the tropics for an explore but this is the other one in that uh, set this book is fantastic it is uh, nature obscura by kelly brenner who is a fantastic author and has a lot of like online stuff so i'll link to her twitter as well and it walks through each of the seasons so it starts off in winter and kind of ends at the other end of the year and Oh, it's just amazing. It's not all about marine life. It's about the hidden life around, uh, I think it's Seattle, in a city. 
and it's it's lovely it's about connecting with nature in the everyday it's all kind of you you just feel like you're living kelly's life through this she writes as if you're coming along on the venture with her like you're her friend and you're there experiencing it the same as her and it is a lovely lovely book i zoomed through this it took me not very long at all to read it not because it's short but because i was it was just it was just like taking a walk with a friend through a city and exploring just fantastic nature so this is definitely something to recommend especially during um times where potentially you're having to find nature a bit closer to home this is the book for you look at this absolutely gorgeous book this is all for the artwork i saw this in a bookshop and brought it on site um it's by kelsey oside wales an illustrated celebration because i could not not own this book i mean it's just glorious anyone who is a fan of whales or dolphins or just lovely artwork this is a book for you in fact, it's up on my shelf like this. It's not like slotted in, you know, you slot a book like that. It is out on my shelf like this so that I can just look at its wonderful artwork. I love it so much. Speaking of fantastic artwork, look at this. I am not even going to hide that I am a massive fan of uh, <laughs> Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, Pixar films in general. And my favourite artwork of all time is always the concept art for these films. And this is no exception it is glorious and gorgeous and i have spent hours staring and flicking through this book and every time i do i find something or see something else just extraordinary so if you like these films or if you don't like these films and you just like great art then get this i can't recommend it enough no, it's not good so yeah so this is a fantastic book i love it so much i love all my books so much but i particularly love this This book is great. Anyone who wants to get into marine biology, get this book. And I mean marine biology in the sense that like just enjoying everyday life, but going into undergrad, this has the basics of everything you kind of learn. Um, in fact, a lot of lecturers kind of use these diagrams in here in their lectures because they're so fantastic. It walks you through the entire ocean, different habitats, different creatures, the taxonomy, reproduction, um, gives you some details it's not so much good for like specific species although there are sections that talk about different things what it's good for is just the overall evolution of every single thing in the ocean and has these fantastic it's just, it's just the most jam-packed book of knowledge that you could ever have about everything in in the sea so if you are interested in marine biology this teaches you marine biology basically at an undergrad level and includes so many things so if you read this book before you go to university or just flick through it and you do like it then it you know it might help in knowing you know this is kind of the stuff that you begin to learn not everything you learn but this is kind of what you you get to yeah what you you start to know and um i love it so much even now i'm learning more things from this book so francis dipper thank you very much um for this wonderful wonderful very very useful book this book i absolutely love and i actually won so it just makes it even better a visual scientific guide perfect description of it and i mean these animals cephalopods uh, are gorgeous anyway and the amazing information and photography that is in this just i mean it exacerbates that it's fantastic if you yeah i mean it's just what it doesn't do if you like um octopuses squids and cuttlefish just get this book i mean this book is made for you it's no surprise that um i am a massive fan of uh scientific artwork and maybe the man on scientific artwork is uh ernest haeckel and this was kindly given to me as a christmas present uh, it's a set of like posters but i'm going to keep them in the book um of the forms of nature i have to do a video drawing like this aren't they 
aren't they one they're just so wonderful i oh, i just spent ages looking at them um and a lot of his work is marine stuff as well like gorgeous seeds and isn't that just stunning stunning from one absolute legend in the natural uh, history scientific art world to another in the nature journaling world john muir laws is kind of known as the goatee man the leader of the nature journal and drawing and it's no wonder because he has such amazing amazing nature journals but also very informative books and um tips and tricks to draw in a sketchbook and just you know let loose uh, and have fun i was actually on a nature journaling podcast which i will link to in the description below but as part of that series the amazing beth and burton who runs it also had a podcast episode with john muir laws and it was fantastic he seems like an absolutely amazing person and i genuinely cried listening to what how he was describing his love of nature in the podcast it was very emotive and very amazing and it's no wonder because he's so well connected with nature through his amazing sketchbooks so that is another book that i adore on my bookshelf now i don't know if you'd have heard of this next book um, it's a bit obscure not many people have seen it it is of course the very famous and very wonderful blue planet 2 um because sometimes the documentary just isn't enough you need access to a physical paper copy and amazing photographs at all times which um i like to keep close at hand it basically walks you through everything that the documentary series does but with extra photographs and some more behind the scenes information and uh I mean, you know what this is about. This is quite obvious and it's just quite, quite amazing. This book is quite special to me. And look at this like old label thing. I brought this uh, trip to the London Aquarium when I was a kid. And um, I mean, well, isn't that so exciting when you used to go on trips and you could like see all the books in the section and like use my pocket money to buy it. And it's just fantastic. It just walks you through the ocean one of those books where it doesn't get very specific but it's very broad and very cool and you would I'd read it as a kid and be like oh I didn't know about this or I didn't know that was a you know a habitat to exist or uh, I know now about this <laughs> and so it was just it was just lovely it's one of those books that is special to my heart see I've been to mangroves it's one of those books where as reading it as a kid I wouldn't I wanted to go, but we would never have thought I would ever have got the chance. I, I, it's just, you know, you dream of these things. And then I was actually, I've done this. I've been snorkeling through where this book is said. And um, yeah, do you comment below? Do you have any books like that? Books that just immediately take you back to your childhood when you're, you're so sentimental about it because you spent so many hours, you know, wishing you could grow up so that you could do these things. And now you're doing it. It's just... Lovely. This book is incredible. I'm going to link to I actually went to Roaring to actually think about it. That's quite a good link to, from we went to the London Aquarium to Roaring with Tim Pond. He's actually signed my book. It's incredible. He's fantastic. He's very skilled. Um, and what's particularly good about his artwork compared to many other people is that he's meticulous with it being um, exact and he knows as I was talking to him you know he knows where the fin should line up he knows how many um the structure of a turtle shell he knows exactly why things have evolved to do different things I've just realized there's a little curled octopus and I've now seen one of these it's made me happy sorry I got distracted then back to talking um and he, in the thing, he describes jellyfish as the jazz of drawing. Oh, it's so good. Um, so go check out that video because it's got some real gems in. But yeah, he it, he knows anatomy inside and out. He won't ever draw something for the sake of drawing it. He'll not only draw it because he knows like, where it goes, but he knows how it's evolved. And, and that is fascinating and comes across in his artwork. And so his book is very informative about drawing but it's also very informative about the science behind it and why nature drawing is um, important and what we talk about in the video is really 
um, quite interesting because I've gone the other way. I've become a scientist and I'm drawing because I like it, whereas he is a, an artist and he's becoming more scientist because he is taking such an interest in the science behind it. And we kind of just merged together um, uh, when we did that video and it was it was great. So, yeah, I love this book. I cannot recommend it enough. He's an amazing artist to support as well. So if you can go buy his book, I really, really would. If I had this as a kid, it would have been one of my favourites. And as an adult, it is one of my favourites. Okay, we are ending with Oceans. Um, the other one was called Oceans 2. Uh, but I got another one because I cannot get enough. Um, and yeah, so... <laughs> That is actually the end uh, of my uh, marine biology book tour. I can't tell if that's not enough marine books or too many. It's probably, I don't think too many is a thing. Maybe it's not enough. I love the books. Well, I hope you like this book tour. Please subscribe and share to support my channel and let me know what books you have below. Um, I am always, always looking out for new marine books to completely fill up these shelves. I mean, they're full already, but really, I'll just get another bookcase. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> I will see you next Wednesday for a, another video as I post videos every single week. Have a fantastic week, everyone, and I'll see you in the comments below.